Welcome to popular prosperity. Plastics are everywhere. We package foods in them. We eat from them. We are clothed in them. We use them for pretty much every consumer good out there. The ubiquity of plastics is rather recent. Despite the first plastics being developed in the 1860s, it took until the 1950s before advancements in manufacturing would start making plastics available to mass markets. Since then, plastic production has grown exponentially. There are now powerful movements trying to ban single-use plastics and reduce plastic use overall. The biggest of them is spearheaded by the United Nations, which just passed a resolution on developing a legally binding treaty to reduce plastic production. The European Union has come further and already banned a variety of single-use plastics in 2021, including plastic cutlery, straws, and cotton buds. These bans and restrictions primarily have one single purpose, reducing the amount of plastic entering the oceans, and in theory that's a noble cause. There are just two big drawbacks to banning and reducing plastic use. The first issue is that all known plastic alternatives require vastly more resources including energy to produce. The second issue is that almost all ocean plastics originate from just a handful of developing nations. Economically advanced countries such as Sweden and Germany have already implemented close-to-perfect plastic waste management systems with almost no leakage of plastics into oceans or natural habitats. Banning plastics in those countries is pointless and counterproductive. Let's look at one of the most common plastic products, the plastic bag. Without restrictions, businesses and individuals alike tend to choose plastic bags over paper or cotton-based alternatives, and that's because plastic bags are much, much cheaper. Plastic bags are cheaper because they require far fewer natural resources to produce. The government of Denmark, one of the most environmentally conscious countries in the world, published a report on the total life cycle environmental impact of different types of carrier bags, from production to disposal. According to their findings, a basic, single-use plastic bag requires so little water and energy to produce that you would need to reuse a paper bag 43 times and a cotton bag 20,000 times just to match the much better environmental impact of plastic bags. Using a paper bag 43 times before it tears is impossible. Using a cotton bag 20,000 times would mean that you have to use the same cotton bag every single day for 54 years straight. Again, that is rather unlikely. This means that using a paper or cloth bag is pretty much guaranteed to consume more water, more energy, and emit more greenhouse gases over the total life cycle of the bag from production to destruction. Let's look at another super ubiquitous plastic product, the plastic bottle. The main two alternatives to plastic bottles are glass and metal bottles. Tetra packs don't really count, as they contain a plastic film inside. Compared to glass bottles, plastic bottles are cheaper to produce, cheaper to transport, and cheaper to recycle. In terms of production, factoring in every step from resource extraction to molding, the average plastic bottle consumes 3.8 megajoules of energy, while a glass bottle of the same size consumes about double that at 6.6 .6 megajoules. This is in part due to the high temperatures required to mold glass. Glass has to be heated to around 1,500 degrees Celsius versus just 120 degrees Celsius for plastic bottles. Glass bottles are heavy. Trucks carrying beverages stored in glass containers can carry around one-third less in product than when using plastic bottles. Using glass instead of plastic bottles means we need more trucks on the road, more people driving those trucks, and more harmful gas consumption. When it comes to recycling, the environmental impact of glass bottles is even worse. Turning old glass into new glass still uses about 70% of the energy it takes to make new glass from scratch. Recycling old plastic into new plastic, for example, to make polyester clothing, requires just 10% of the energy it takes to make new plastic. In summary, glass bottles require more energy to produce, more energy to transport, and more energy to recycle. While you can reuse glass bottles, the same is possible with plastic bottles. In fact, due to the greater break resistance and lighter weight of plastic bottles, it is much easier to use them continuously and carry them around. That's a four times loss for glass bottles compared to plastic bottles. Now we could repeat this analysis for all the hundreds of plastic products out there, and the result would pretty much always be the same.
The reasons why we predominantly use plastics over alternative materials are usually the same. Plastics are cheaper. They are cheaper because they require less energy and resources to make, less energy to transport, and less energy to recycle. Plastic products are also more convenient. They are less likely to break than glass. They are lighter in weight, and they can have all types of properties from fluffy soft to sturdy and hard. In the free market, companies and consumers naturally try to get the most benefit out of the fewest resources. Using fewer resources for the same outcome means lower greenhouse emissions and environmental impact overall. Now what about plastic trash and ocean plastics? In theory, plastic trash, if disposed of improperly, is indeed more problematic than discarded glass, cotton, paper, or metal. That is because contrary to plastic, those materials break down more easily and thus are better at reintegrating into our natural ecosystems. Let's look at how Sweden is dealing with the plastic trash problem. Sweden recycles roughly 50% of its trash. Plastics can be recycled two to three times before they degrade too much to be used to produce new products. This is where trash incineration comes in. In Sweden, the 50% of the trash that is not recycled is incinerated in modern, state-of-the-art incineration plants. The energy generated from trash incineration is enough to heat 1,250,000 apartments in the small country of just 10 million people. While incineration leads to some CO2 emissions, these are insignificant compared to those produced in composting of alternatives such as paper bags. Composting generates methane, which is up to 25 times as potent as CO2 as a greenhouse gas. Remember that study from the Danish government? Their environmental impact looks at the entire value chain of plastic bags versus the alternatives, from production to incineration. And plastic bags win hands down against the alternatives when it comes to total environmental impact. As long as we all properly dispose of our plastic waste, using plastics greatly reduces environmental harm. The problem is that, unlike Sweden, many countries do not handle their trash responsibly. The average human generates 100 to 200 grams of plastic waste per day. Germany, along with Ireland, produce more plastic waste per person than most countries, or around 480 grams per day in the case of Germany. Out of that plastic waste, some is mismanaged. Mismanagement means that the waste is openly burned, stored in unregulated landfills, or ends up in the ocean. Western countries, despite producing large amounts of plastic waste, handle close to 100% of it properly. Germany, for example, properly disposes of 99.96% of its plastic waste. In other words, it mismanages just 0.04%. Out of these 0.04%, just 0.26% end up in the ocean. That means out of all of Germany's plastic waste, just 0.0001% ends up in the ocean. The real source of plastic trash in our oceans is developing countries in South America, Africa, and Asia. In countries such as Tanzania or the Philippines, close to 100% of plastic waste is disposed of improperly. And in the case of the Philippines, around 7% of this mismanaged plastic waste ends up in the ocean. 0.0001% in Germany versus 7% in the Philippines. That's a huge difference. Plastic waste in the ocean is not a general problem associated with plastic consumption. It is an isolated problem in certain developing countries. So what can we do about the ocean plastic problem? Countries such as Germany have effectively solved it. Banning single-use plastics in countries such as Germany, Sweden, or even in the United States won't have any measurable impact on ocean plastics. On the other hand, banning plastics in those places would increase the consumption of water and energy, as well as significantly increase CO2 and methane emissions. In countries that still mismanage their plastic waste, urgent solutions are needed. One solution is cleanups. Just a handful of rivers in developing countries are responsible for most plastics emitted into our oceans. NGOs such as the Ocean Cleanup go straight to river estuaries and catch plastics before they enter our oceans. Another solution is changing behaviors. Singapore and Malaysia are very similar in their ethnic mix-up, their geography and climate. Until 1965, they were even part of the same country. Today, both countries produce around the same 200 grams of plastic waste per day per person. Despite similar plastic consumption, Malaysia emits 26 times as much plastic into the ocean per capita than Singapore. 
How was Singapore able to change people's behaviors? The country set up easy-to-reach plastic waste collection points. Littering costs first-time offenders up to 2,000 Singapore dollars or 1,500 U.S. dollars, and repeat offenders up to 7,000 U.S. dollars, plus community service. Plastic bans are not the solution. The alternatives to plastic consume more resources and, as a result, emit more greenhouse gases. Plastic alternatives are many times more expensive, reducing the purchasing power of people on limited incomes. Plastic alternatives are also less convenient. Banning plastics for everyone is akin to collective punishment. Harming everyone, especially people on low incomes, for behaviors of a limited few actors that do not take care of the trash they produce. Discard your trash properly, so that we can all benefit from the advantages of plastics without suffering from plastic pollution. If you want to support me in making more videos like this one, consider joining us on Patreon. Thanks for watching.